the best transcription site one can use as a beginner in Kenya. There's so many, all the transcription sites I mentioned in my videos are very good for beginners. The problem is you have to pass a transcription test. I know it sounds so restrictive when it comes to transcription test, but just think of this as someone's business. And regardless of whether you are a beginner or not, that person has clients and those clients, they just want good transcript. You know, they, they don't care whether you hired a beginner or not. So that is why they have the transcription test because they have to deliver to their clients, you know, whether the transcript is a beginner or not. But the transcription test, like the Vabit one is, I don't know, I don't think it's hard. It's about B movies. I don't know whether they've changed it. The one for the B movie and that um, B that, you know, goes to court and all that. Imagine actually that script, the whole of that um, B movie story is on Wikipedia. If you just Google the B movie, the transcription test for Vabit, there's, that story is all there. And if you want to pass that test, first read um, Wikipedia about B movie. And then now every time you're transcribing that transcription test, try to put into context. If there's something you can't hear, then refer to the, to the Wikipedia the wikipedia document so yeah, but, but, but the best transcription sites so far qa world is good for experience only if you're really a beginner qa world is good for experience verbit is good if you're trying to get advanced experience and you're trying to make more money qa world does not pay as much but you will really get experience verbit pays a bit more than qa world they pay nowadays they pay around 24 24 shillings. So they pay more than Kiwi World. And also, if you want to get serious experience and try transcribe me. Now, the test for transcribing, transcribe me is hard because they have three audios and their pass mark is 98%. So if if you do the three audios, you pass two and then you fail one, you, you still won't get in. So transcribe me is tricky like that. Um, how is Vabit? Let me see this question. How is Vabit now? Are there any jobs? So I've been hearing reports that there are no jobs in Vabit right now. Like most of the time, there are no jobs. And I think they're giving the jobs to people with very high ratings. You know, nowadays, Vabit, they give jobs according to rating, especially if the jobs are few, then they will just show the jobs to people who have high ratings, 4.5, 4.7, 4.8, and all that. So I've been hearing from people there are no jobs. And it's very common for transcription companies not to have jobs sometimes because it also depends on their clients and whether they have jobs. Um, so Paul, I don't think, yeah, I think the jobs are less and less, but if you can improve your rating, then you'll be the first, one of the first people to be getting jobs when they're, less jobs but um if you want to navigate that if you don't want to be you know affected when there are no jobs on one platform i would advise you to register on more than three platforms so if there are no jobs on Vabit, then there are jobs on qa world and by the at night 3 a.m 1 a.m 12 a.m the jobs on qa world are so many like you wouldn't even do all of them so try to burn the midnight candle so if there are no jobs on Vabit you'll find jobs on QA World. If there are no jobs on QA World, try transcribe me, try Upwork. And by the best time to bid for Upwork jobs is also around 12, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. That is when I get my jobs. Um, so yeah, I was talking about transcribe me and the transcription test. Now the pass mark is 98% for transcribe me and they have three audios. You can only do the audios after you have passed the grammar test and the grammar test is equally challenging. I think it's A, B and C or something. If you pass two audios and you fail one, like if you get 97% in one and the others you get 99, 98, you still fail the test. So you have to get above 98% for all the three audios. The secret in passing transcribe me transcription test is the guide lines the guys are so many like they are so long and they are very detailed and i know people usually just but that is how they fail because they have these guidelines you're not supposed to start with a capital letter 
you're not supposed to put you know i don't know a space and all that and all that so if you don't read and they also have a guideline instruction on how to type the numbers you know numbers if it's 10 you know you spell it out if it's below 10 you spell it out if it's above 10 then you have to write the number itself so if you don't follow this guideline if you don't read the guidelines very well most of the time you will fail but those audios are very clear the only problem people have is reading the guidelines um which other platform do people ask a lot about people also ask about speech but speech but is good platform and those ones they take even kenyans now the problem with speech pad is that right now they are not they are not taking in transcribers i think they have a lot of transcribers they're not taking in transcribers but if you get if you get um if you go to speech pad when they are hiring and you happen to get that account i think that will be the best thing that will be that would have happened to you and they also have video captioning jobs for speech pad Another good platform for you to try and get jobs is OneForma by Bacter. OneForma has jobs, and the beauty of OneForma is it has different types of jobs, not just transcription jobs. And those some of them are very easy. It's like remote tasks. So if they are not transcription jobs, you can do a data annotation jobs, and all that. Um, how about three play media? Have you used it before? I was thinking about investing in it. Do you want to buy do you want to buy a three play media account? Well, three play was nice until recently. I've seen some emails circulating that they are banning some Kenyan accounts. So I don't know whether you should be investing in it. If by investing you mean buying an account, I would advise you to try and apply. I've seen there are I've seen they're taking in applications. So for English transcriptionists right now, I would advise you to try and apply for it instead of buying. Because if you buy and then they start banning Kenyan, they start banning Kenyan accounts, then you see you you would have lost your money and you would be getting any job. So try passing the test and see. And I've also seen someone um, complaining about transactions. Is it you? What's happening with the transactions? Is it you, Paul? Yeah, so always try different platforms. I might not give you definitive answers. You have to try for the, for yourself and see, you know, whether it's something you can work with. But do not buy the accounts if you're not sure about those accounts. You will just end up losing money you don't even have. But Triple Media, they usually pay five dollars, between five dollars and ten dollars for an hour audio or something like that. And also, by the app and has new projects for transcription. Oh, it's okay. Up and has new transcription projects. I've seen like two, they've sent me emails inviting me to apply. So if you can just go to up and, and up and connect and create the account, that one you don't have to pass a test. You just create the account, you state your skills and abilities. And then once you fill the form, now you'll be able to see all the projects on their platform. They have so many project, projects. Most of them are data collection. You're supposed to take videos of your hands and, you know, expressions on your face. And they pay well. Some of them, you can even be paid around $15 per project, like one project. And if you do 10 projects or five projects in one week, that's good money. So try up and right now they have a transcription project. I have actually been invited to apply. So if you can go to up and connect and create that account, then you'll you'll get that you'll get that project. Um up and sent me mail to oh yeah, about the Chinese transcription project. Have you applied? You should apply and see how it goes. One thing I'm not sure about up and is how the invoicing is supposed to be done. You know, I haven't invoiced them yet, so I was just wondering how the invoicing is supposed to be done. But in terms of the jobs, they do have the jobs. There are always so many projects on that platform. It's the same as one former by Bacterra. One former also has, oh, there's also another project on App and for Swahili speakers. So I think that that one would suit Kenyan transcript, transcribers more if you're a Swahili speaker. Um, so even one former has these jobs. 
just link up and they have transcription jobs sometimes, they have data entry jobs. Um, I've seen a project or two about surveys, you know, responding to surveys and getting paid, you know, some money. So you should look into Appen and one former. Look into Appen and one former and remote tasks. There's actually one of my one of the people I mentored in who has been making money on remote tasks. And she just joined, she didn't have any experience. You know, for remote tasks, you just take the training. Those people they will train you. If it's data annotation, they will train you. Data annotation is very easy. Just yeah, it's very easy. People scared, people are scared of the word. But it's easy. There's they have transcription jobs, like they have so many tasks that you can work on. And I just saw one of that mentee. That person I'm mentoring, she withdrew around what thirty dollars this last week, actually this week on Monday. Yeah, so she withdrew thirty dollars, and it was her first time to work on that platform. She's been there for like one month now. So remote tasks is a good one. Don't be scared of the training. The training is the one that's most exhausting, but it's very short. Um, yeah, Paul, try try the uh, that up and project and see whether you can get in. Though I know once you have filled the form the transcription project you have to do a transcription test you have to do a transcription test but the test is i don't think it's hard i opened it i just didn't finish it yeah so try as many platforms as possible so that if one platform does not have jobs then you will leverage on a different platform that has jobs but up and has many jobs remote tasks has jobs one former has jobs and just be open-minded. Don't be that person who says, I only want to do transcription jobs. There are easier tasks than transcription. You know, like the project, up and projects sometimes are very easy. There are easier tasks than transcription. And the more tasks you can do, the more skills you have, you know, the better your chances of making money, the more money you can make. Like me, I do transcription. If I get a transcription job, I will do it. If I get a writing job, writing articles, you know, a blog, I will do it. If I get a job for creating websites, because I also do web development sometimes, I will do that job. If it's data entry, I will do so. Don't be choosy. Apply for those jobs that you think you can get. Um, someone also asked whether it's real, whether transcription makes, like people really make money on transcription. And that is true. People make money on transcription. I know when you're a beginner, it seems so bleak and seems like just talk and no money, but there's money. The problem is people want to get the money as soon as they start to, like you've had someone is making 10,000 in one week and now you want to start making 10,000 in a week. But it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You have to give yourself time to improve your skill you have to apply on these um, projects you have to apply on these platforms take it takes time you can start making money even after three months of showing interest in transcription just depending on how committed you are but people make a lot of money sometimes i when i started working on Vabit. I started working on Vabit. I was just a campus student in university and at first i used to make like 20 dollars in one month so I decided since the jobs are not many, that time the jobs are not many, just like now, that time there were no jobs. So I would wake up at around 10 p.m. and I'd give myself a goal. I want to transcribe four audios, five, at least four audios every day on Vabit. So I start transcribing at 5 p.m up to 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Sometimes I wouldn't even sleep. So I make sure I've transcribed four audios per day. And now one audio used to pay around $2. One audio was around 10 minutes, 11 minutes. So if I make $2 on one audio, let's say $2, and I do four audios per day, that's how that's two times four, $8 per day. Now, if I make $8 per day and I work, I work, let's say, 28 days, let's remove some weekends when you're feeling all lazy and stuff. So 28 days, and every day you're making $8. That's that's a substantive amount of money. Let me just calculate how much that is. Um, Twenty-eight times eight dollars. Hmm, that's around two hundred dollars. So you can be making twenty thousand 
per month if you give yourself goals and if you look for the if you go to the platform when there are jobs so don't usikwetu lem tumonye you wake up one day and you go to barbit and there are no jobs and then you start complaining there are no jobs be the kind of person who is always on barbit me used to be, as long as it's my working time 5 pm to 1 am i would always be on barbit refreshing the page the moment a job is posted i pick it and the beauty of barbit is those jobs that those jobs that are a bit challenging in terms of the accent like indian accent you know and those jobs that challenging in terms of the context like um when they're talking about tech and microsoft those are the best paying jobs so make sure you pick on longer videos longer audios up around 12 minutes 13 minutes i don't know whether they've increased the length of the videos but when i was working there actively the lengths used to be about 6 minutes 7 minutes up to around 12 minutes so if you work on 12 minutes audios every day and you're working on four audios per day then you'll be able to make around 200 dollars per month if you're consistent and if you put in the work and you get good rating so don't prioritize the money and forget about the rating so do the jobs but make sure you do them do them well me i started with making 20 dollars and then i went to making 7 um 70 per week and so i said i have to improve that now i doubled it to around 140 dollars per week it's very possible just give yourself goals and yeah pick on good jobs be very intentional when you're selecting the jobs on the platform don't just pick the easy ones and those ones that are very short um pick the long ones those ones that are a bit challenging in terms of the accent because if you you're working on a job that's who's nikama indian accent then even the one who is reviewing usually rates you according to how challenging or difficult the audio is so if it was challenging and you put in you tried your best at kama you have a number of inaudibles that person won't give you a very low rating now if you pick on an easy job just an easy file and then you don't do and then you don't do well on it then that person will give you a very low rating so be strategic with these jobs be strategic don't be scared of the hard ones um um uh, judy said says i applied on verbit and did the exams but i have never gotten any response after but there's so many people are complaining about verbit not getting back to them and then there's someone who said she did the test today and the next day she had received an email telling her she's not passed when i started working on verbit if you do the test today and then you failed you will get an email like in 24 48 hours they tell you unfortunately you failed the test and all that and all that but nowadays i feel like they become too choosy in who they they respond to so some people get emails that they fail some don't you can even wait for a whole year but in their email they usually say if you passed the test they will get back to you in like 30 days So Judith if it's been 30 days and you've not received any response I feel like it's okay for you to assume you've not passed the test and then they but I have felt I have had they're not taking in more transcribers there's one person who works on um who is working seriously and actively on public she told me I don't, she doesn't think right now they're taking in transcribers so maybe wait a bit I'm also had they approve new transcribers in March and September. So just try to wait while you're applying on other platforms. And by the way, right now it's understandable when these platforms say they are not taking more transcribers. Like I think good transcript speech pad and even now Vabit is cutting down on the people and the number of people they are taking in because everyone wants to work online and there are so many applications. and maybe they don't have as many jobs as the number of transcribers <clears throat> but yeah judith if it's been 30 days it's best to assume you've not passed or just give them some time assume that they're not taking in new people right now i also have a test i applied i applied for the transcript another transcription account on vibit the other day they sent me a link to do my test i haven't done it yet so i will just do the test in the course of next week i send it and then i'll do a video on the response i get mm. judith which other platform have you tried apart from babit um cloud to five hello do you offer training 
I have started offering training in transcription. Just the training is on how to do the actual transcription jobs. You know, I usually say if you can do the jobs, then these transcription tests won't be anything to you. Like me, I when I started, I first started in I practiced transcription. When I was good, then I would try to apply for Vabit. And me, I never failed the Vabit test or transcribe me test. And I have all those accounts, Vabit, transcribe me. I have a QA World account. I have a Go Transcript account. Though my Go Transcript is very, is dead right now. It doesn't even have, I don't use it at all. I give it to someone else. But yeah, I'm offering training on how to, transcription training. I will train you on time stamping and all those things and how to identify or to detect errors in your transcript. We will go through all these platforms. We will go through their transcription tests and guidelines on how to pass the tests. But unfortunately, I am not offering free training because, you know, I'm an individual who is just, it's an initiative of mine. It's not like I'm being sponsored by a company to do the test. So the training can't be free because I will also be spending time and effort on, you know, reviewing your transcripts because the training will be very hands-on we'll be doing a lot of exercises transcription exercises and then we'll be reviewing those exercises so if you're willing to pay for the training plan to pay for then feel free to fill the form and i will reach out to you uh, do you have any experience in transcription plan to pay for or you you're fresh you want to start have you transcribed before for any platform Mm. Judith Marere, I have tried QA past, but getting the jobs has been challenging. Oh, yeah, you were not here when I was talking about getting the jobs on QA World. Um, QA World is one of the easiest platforms to get in because the, the transcription test, the transcription test is not hard and it's easy to pass and those that transcripts real for the test is all over you can always you can get the transcript but now the challenge comes in when it comes to getting the jobs and as i was saying judy those jobs they pop in as soon as they pop out so two things you have to do if you want to be able to if you want to be the first one to see these jobs and claim them install auto refresh Auto refresh is a, a Chrome extension, and that extension keeps. You will just set it. You say you want the platform to be refreshed after every five seconds, every you know, ten seconds or two seconds. So it keeps refreshing, and the moment a job is posted, you will be the first one to see and claim it. Now the jobs pop in and pop out, pop in and pop out. There's no time to put that. Ikuna jobs kakumi zina kungojia, though. Also, if you want now, if you want to see all those jobs waiting for you, then look for the jobs around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 2 a.m., 1 a.m. You know, when most transcribers are asleep, you know. So that time I have had, actually, most of my mentees are telling me that time around 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., there are so many jobs on QA World. Like, when was it? On Monday, on Saturday, she said there were so many jobs like she couldn't even finish them also. If you can just sacrifice one night or two and try to look for these jobs at that particular point, that particular time, then you'll be able to see jobs on QA World. And what else? Yeah, so install the auto refresh, look for the jobs um, at the right time. And uh, there's something else people do. Yeah, and they say that the jobs are posted every, like the first minute. No. 7.31, 10 um, 11.01. So that's the first minute of every hour. Then you should check for the jobs then and see whether you'll be able, you see jobs at that time. Maybe you let me know if these things help you. If when you look for the jobs at 3 a.m., if you install the auto refresh, or if you look for the jobs at the top of the hour, 7.01, 10.01, 11.01, whether you'll still be able to see the jobs. Um, how can I reach out on you? Okay, so there's a form I have put in the description of all my videos. I'll also comment it. I'll put the link in the comment section. So if you want the training, just fill that form and I will reach out to you personally. I'll reach out to you if I feel like I can meet your needs. You know, I can tell you I will train you 
And then when you tell me what you want to learn or the expectations you have, I'm not able to meet them. So in that form, you outline your expectations. And if I can assist you in meeting those expectations or the needs, I will reach out to you and then we will organize on how you can get your training. But the training is online because right now I'm training people as well, but everyone is in different locations. So I can't really offer face-to-face -face training plus COVID and all that. Um, Cloud, look out for the form. Mukai Suching asks, where are you located? <laughs> yeah, I am living very far from Nairobi, if that is what you'd like to know. I don't live in Nairobi. So, and I know most people who want training are from Nairobi and I might not be able to train you physically. If I was in Nairobi, I would organize uh, just a training like once a week. We meet at some point, you know, in an office or somewhere and then we train. But since I'm not in Nairobi, I might not be able to to do physical training. But I'm always online. If you feel that form, like I've seen you, you've filled the form, I will reach out to you. So don't worry about that, Mukaisi. I will reach out to you and we will organize on how you can get your training. And training is very important. So if you're not able to uh, do the training that I am offering, you can always um, register for the Ajira training. They are offering free trainings on all those online jobs, transcription, you know, writing, data. So you can register on their website and then you get the training for free and mentorship um just want to look at some of the other questions i got don't want to leave anyone out on my facebook i don't know whether you guys would like me to do a video on like real transcript how it should look like you know timestamps and all that just to know how a transcript should look like and the things you should focus on i don't know whether that is something you guys are interested in i've never done it because i feel like people are more focused on where they can get the jobs than doing the jobs i also want to do a video on writing the writing upwork proposals uh yeah so i'll also do a video on writing good upwork proposals uh, hmm. have you heard about pico workers no what is it a platform where people get jobs i have heard of um click worker and people are getting jobs actually one of them is getting jobs on click worker but pico workers you know tell me about it Emmanuel, do you have a particular question about it? Because if you do, I can always do my research and then um, try to do another live stream and then give you the, my results. So tell me more about it. Do you work with direct clients? Yes, I do. Actually, that is what the other thing I want to talk about right now, working with direct clients. Yes, I do work with direct clients. Um, I started, you know, I started transcription in 20, what, 2017, 28, 2017, give or take. So it's been around four years, five years. And the beauty of if you want to succeed in transcription, then you don't want to think of it as employment. Like now you have a Vabit account and you want to be working on Vabit for the rest of your transcription journey. You need to have a goal goals and one of the goals should be to get direct clients because if you have di direct clients are people who will give you jobs like these people they know you are their transcriber and you know they are your client so the direct clients are not easy to get but if you know where to look you will find them so that should be one of your goals to get direct clients if you bid on a job on upwork and then you get that job always make sure to ask that client whether they have more jobs and request them to be sending you the jobs. You can also apply, you can also apply for these jobs on their websites. Like look for podcasts. Nowadays there are so many podcasts, so many podcasts. Just look for podcasts you're interested in, go to their website, tafta email yao, 
and just pitch to them. Tell them you are a transcriber, you've seen their podcasts, and now you want to be transcribing for them. The best way to win these clients is to do a sample for them. So let's say you want to transcribe for Adele's this podcast called Legally Clueless. So download one of their podcast episodes, transcribe like the first two minutes, and then when you're sending them an email telling them you're a transcriber and you want these transcription jobs, send them the sample. So that is how you get direct clients. Also, you can get direct clients on LinkedIn. Ensure you are on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, create an account. Um, indicate your transcription if, experience if you have any profile overview. Also, talk about transcription and try to connect with people who either have podcasts, you know, they are research companies, they do interviews and all that. And by the way, I've gotten like three clients from LinkedIn and it's because of my profile. It's It's all about transcription. Okay, not all about transcription, but... I have a lot of transcription experience. I have put, talked about transcription, my transcription there. So these people, they reach out to you. On LinkedIn, when they're looking for a transcriber, they will reach out to you if your profile shows you're a transcriptionist. So direct clients are a lifesaver when it comes to transcription. You, sh you should just have a goal to get direct clients. Another person I was mentoring the other day got a client from Facebook. So she just posted that she's a transcriptionist on Facebook. If you have any transcription jobs, um, reach out to him. And he was lucky enough because when she, he posted that thing, someone on Facebook, I think, forwarded to someone who was looking for a transcription. And that is how he got a long-term transcription client. Mm, David Kim. Can you advise someone to buy a Vabit account? No, I can't advise anyone to buy a Vabit account or any account for that matter. But I know people still buy them. I have my reasons for not buying accounts. Number one, the number one reason is these accounts that you buy, most of them are on the verge of being closed, like I've just said. If someone is selling to you an account, you know Vabit is suspend accounts. Now at a suspend account, yako, but you will still be able to log into that account. So the person whose account has been suspended will come to you, Ama will advertise the account and say they are selling an account at 20,000. Then when you ask, let me see the account, they will show you an account. It still exists. They can log in, but utaona hakuna jobs for your account. When you ask them, they will tell you, oh, there are no jobs at this point. And that. Then you pay for that for the account without even knowing the account has been sus suspended so you lose your money number two people will sell your account especially for Vabit. me i don't know how people do it because i know Vabit they send payment to that the email you registered with unless nowadays they've introduced or rather they have a place where you can change the email but what i know is they usually send you the payment to the email you registered with initially and when i was working there there was no option to change that email. So if you buy an account and you don't change that PayPal email or that person who's selling the account to you does not give you the access to that PayPal email, then you'll just be doing the jobs and that money will go to that person's account. Now, if someone tells you where Fananga took Kazi and then when you get paid, I will, you know, send you the money and then that person turns out to be a liar. Now you see you would have lost. You've bought the account, you've done the jobs, no money. You lost, you've lost on both accounts. So some people are lucky enough to actually buy good accounts that make them good money. Now the problem is knowing whether you are the lucky one. But yeah, I wouldn't advise anyone to buy a Vabit account. If you want to buy an account, regardless, go to accountsplace.co.ke. Accounts place, accounts place, they have accounts. And the beauty of accounts place is there is the escrow protection. Es escrow protection makes sure that when you're paying for this account, now let me give you some tips. Don't pay for the account outside of the platform. Now, if you're doing the, if you got an account on escrow, on not on escrow, on accounts place, and someone wants to, someone wants to sell it to you, Tell them you do all the transactions on that, you know, do all the transactions on that platform. So you make the payment 
but the payment does not go to them directly, like immediately. So it just goes to escrow. Escrow is like a neutral point, you know. And then now you inspect the account. If you like the rating, okay, that the rating is okay, it's four point something. The account is in good standing, it has jobs, and you get the logins to, you know, you get the logins and you change the email and all that, and you like it, then you can now make the payment. Now, the beauty of making the payment on accounts place during using escrow is you can, I don't know whether it's possible, but it's not impossible. It's possible for you to track your payment. You know, if you learn later that someone sold to you a botched account, you can follow it up. But if you meet with someone Mahali in Nairobi town, and then you make the transaction, you know, you, it's very hard for you to follow up with that person. Mm. Do you need the link for accounts place, David Kim, or you still you have it, or do you have someone who is selling for you, who is selling to you a Babit account? Let me know. How is transcribe me? Um, transcribe me is just like I've said, it's one of the most challenging accounts to get when it comes to transcription accounts because they have more than one test more than one transcription test and they are very strict and their guidelines are long. Now there's also one person who was complaining about sometimes transcribe me doesn't have jobs. That is why I've said most of these platforms, there's just a time when they don't have jobs, you know. So, but it's a good account if you get it. They, they have three audios, three audio tests but before you get to the audios, you have to do grammar test. And the grammar test has three parts. We always say that transcription is all about grammar. So that is why they, every company has a grammar test. So the grammar test has three parts. It's very easy to pass. You can actually Google the, all the answers, but be sure on the answers you are, the answers you get, make sure they are the right ones. Now, once you pass the grammar test, then you can go ahead to the audio test. The audio tests are three and the pass mark is 98%. So let's say you've done all the three audios and you know, for transcribe me, you do the test and you get your results immediately. You will know whether you've passed or not. You'll just see your results. Now, if you get 98% in two audios and then get 97 in one, you will still have failed. So you need to get 98 and above for the three audios and still pass the grammar test. That is how you get the account. Now, the beauty of Transcreme is once you've passed like all the three audios, you've got uh, 98%, you will know immediately you've passed and then your account will be activated in like two working days. So there's no much waiting for Transcreme Me. That's the beauty of Transcreme Me. And then now you can take as many tests as possible. If you want to be getting more jobs, you can do the English test. You can do, I know there are a number of tests. If you are skilled in other languages, you can do their tests as well so that you'll be getting more jobs. So Peter, do you want to apply for Transcribe Me or have you applied already? Don't buy a Transcribe Me account if you're planning to buy a Transcribe Me account. That one is very tricky actually. Hmm. So let me know if you are applying, you're planning to apply. Have you read the guidelines don't ignore the guidelines i know they are very long the transcription guidelines are very long but those people are very detailed you know they have the marking scheme they use is auto generated that is why you get your results immediately so if your work is not as as per their marking scheme you won't get in so you have to follow the guidelines that's the trick the audios are not hard the guidelines are the problem I have a Vabit account, but no jobs are showing, and I still have an auto refresh. Oh, yeah, so Kate, as I was saying, some people have been saying that Vabit does not have jobs at the moment. And uh, I have also told people that sometimes when there are less jobs, sometimes when there are less jobs on Vabit, they usually give those jobs to people with high ratings. 
Now, there might be very many reasons why you're not seeing jobs on Babbit. Either they're just no jobs, you know, they've not posted more jobs because they don't have more jobs to post, or they have less jobs and want to pay a priority to those guys who have high ratings, you know, 4.5, 4.7, you know. So that's the second reason be why you're not seeing jobs. The third reason is your account has been suspended. Now, hear me out. For transcription, let me tell you, me, I had two Vabit accounts. And then I remember there's a time I gave another person the second Vabit account. So to just work on it because I couldn't work on two Vabit accounts at the same time. And then at some point, there were just no jobs on that account, like nada for like two weeks. So I said, well, how comes like there's no, it's not possible for an account to just have no jobs for two weeks straight. So I reached out to, is it who's who's the community manager now? Is it Dana? I don't know. So I reached out to one of the one of the employees, the one the community manager then. And then I asked her why I don't see jobs on my account for like two weeks. And then she told me, let me check. Then I was, she just sent me an email telling me my account was suspended. The decision, the decision is final. It was suspended because of low rating. So like I said, Vabit accounts, they get suspended, but you're still able to log in. Now what will happen is you will never see jobs on that account. So just make sure if your rating is good, it's four, you know, it's not in red. If it's four or something, then just know it's because there are no jobs. But if you have a very low rating and you've not been seeing jobs for a while, I will advise you to reach out to support and find out whether your account is still active. I don't know, does that answer your question Kate, sufficiently? Uh, why does Kribi have a condition of linking your bank account to the PayPal? Is it safe? Yeah, it's safe. So this is what happens. For PayPal, you can have a PayPal account. You still receive money on that PayPal account. You're able to send money, but you, you have limitations. Like let's say someone pays you a thousand dollars, for instance, you might not be able to withdraw that a thousand dollars because your account has limitations, you know, your PayPal account. Now, verification of the PayPal account lifts that limitation. Now you can resend and receive like a limited amount of money. That is why you're supposed to, that is why you advise to verify your PayPal account and it's safe. PayPal is safe to verify your account. Verification, you just add your bank. I, I advise people to just add their credit card. It's easier, you know, enter your credit card details confirm the card and that's it so when it comes to scribi the reason they ask for in my opinion is they ask for a verified paypal account so that regardless of the amount of money you get you're still able to withdraw that money is it where you work for ten thousand dollars i don't know whether that's possible you work for a thousand dollars and then they send it to your paypal and then our PayPal has issues because it has limitations and now it becomes a whole thing where you're reaching out to Scribi support and reaching out to PayPal support. If you verify your PayPal account, you will avoid all these things. Plus, Scribi only just checks whether the account is verified. It doesn't really have access to your PayPal account. So, Mkaisi, don't be, don't worry about Scribi having access to your PayPal account. It doesn't. But once your account is verified, your PayPal account is verified you'll be able to apply to Scribi. And Scribi is very, it's a good platform for a number of reasons. One, you also don't transcribe from scratch. You just, there are options to just edit an automatically generated transcript. That's one of the perks of Scribi. And there are audio tests. You have, when you, you get the link to do the test, you will get a number of audios. So you have options. You choose the audio that you're comfortable with. So they have a number of audio tests. You choose one, you work on it. So it's safe. It's safe to link your PayPal to your bank. Just make sure the PayPal is yours alone. Don't share PayPal accounts. And use a good password. 
and don't save your PayPal password just anywhere. Ah, oh, Peter, you've tried to create. What challenge are you facing? Are you able to create? How do you find the audios for transcribe me? Um, how do you find routing number during linking your bank? Oh, you asked for your routing number when you're verifying your PayPal account and you want to link it to your bank directly. They ask you for a routing number for the bank. So to find the routing number, what I usually do, how I found mine, just do a simple Google search. If your account is equity, just search equity bank routing number. You will get it. If your account is COP, like my account, I use cooperative bank. I just Googled cooperative bank routing number. It's not something so secret. So you will find it on Google. If you don't, if the bank you're using, if you don't see the routing number when you search it for the particular bank you're using, just call their customer care. Tell them you want to link your bank to your PayPal account and you want the routing number. And also one thing you can do if you're having challenges with linking your PayPal account, let's say you put details of your credit card and it keeps telling you the bank does not approve this transaction or something like that. It, it's because you, like you've not activated internet banking and that case is usually very, very common for cooperative bank. Now to go, to go over that, call the bank or go to the bank and tell them you want to link your bank, your credit card, to your PayPal account. So they will guide you on how to activate internet banking and how to go about the linking. Now, remember if you're adding your credit card, you will input the details and then they will tell you, they will send you a code in your bank statement, your card statement. So that's code, you'll get it in, let's say you put your details today on the PayPal platform, your credit card details. After two days, just download. If you're using Equity, any other bank, download the card, the statement. Statement shows you the transactions you've made on your bank. So if you download these statements, you will see that particular charge for PayPal. They usually charge you around two dollars. Yeah, two dollars. That they will return the money. They will refund the money. So once they've deducted the $2 from your account, you'll get that statement. And you'll get that particular charge on your bank, bank statement. And now it will, ha it will have the code. So you just take the code, put it back on PayPal, and then your account will be successfully confirmed. And once it's, it's been successfully confirmed, you will get back your $2 that PayPal would have deducted. So verifying is free. It doesn't steal your money, it deducts and then returns the money. Um, if you look at your statement, you download your statement and don't see that particular charge, that particular charge from PayPal, then just call the bank. Like me, I called my bank. I was linking my PayPal account, I think two weeks ago, to my new, you know, with my new card. And I didn't see that particular. After three days, I'm looking at my statement that charge from PayPal is not there. So I just called them, I told them I was linking my card. I can't see that change, that charge on my statement. And of course, that lady asked me a few questions to make sure it's my bank account. And then she read to me the code. Yeah. So if you find any challenges with your linking, just call your bank. They will help you out. Um, so on the transcribe me test for Peter, the audios is where I have a problem with transcribe me. Yeah, it's where everyone has problems with transcribe me because there are three audios. And like I said, they focus on two things when it comes to those audios, how, you know, how you understood the guidelines, whether you understood the guidelines and the accuracy. So if you want to pass that audio, the advice I would give you, like what I did, the first time I failed, the second time I failed, the third time I said, now nah, I'm going to take this seriously. I downloaded those guidelines. I took like a whole week just reading the guidelines, making sure I understand what the guidelines are asking me to do. When, if they say put a comma after it, I put a comma after it. So guidelines and accuracy, don't use inaudibles. If you're working on that transcript, please, if you want to fail that test, 
put in audibles. So make sure you hear everything. Just put in audible when you can't really hear. Like, umejaribu and it's just impossible to hear. That's when you put in audibles. But yeah, accuracy, following the guidelines, and no inaudibles, no unintelligibles, no tags, just a good, clean transcript. Oh, no, 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 no. Thanks for your quick response. You're actually, I'm tired of being indoors jobless. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I might not have direct answers, you know, like, I might not have test answers for the different transcription tests, but I went through what you guys are going through in terms of failing these transcription tests and feeling like I want to give up because there are no jobs and everyone everyone says transcription fees. But with some with some time, I just realized that I need to put in the work and be patient with myself. So be patient with yourself. You're a beginner, and there are challenges when you you're a beginner at anything. So give yourself time to improve your skill and try as many companies as possible. Now, my advice is don't focus so much on these very popular platforms, you know, Verbit, QA World, Scribi, Transcribe Me. Don't even bother with good transcript right now. Good transcript is just, I don't know why nowadays they don't, you know, they don't take transcribers they have their own reasons but focus on platforms that are not as popular you know platforms like one former platforms like remote tasks um like up and up and it's very popular but it also has projects you know platforms like transcription hub there's transcription star there's vox tab there's other back is called transcribe <clears throat> you know platforms that are not saturated right now Verbit, qa world you know transcribe me go transcript they are so saturated that is why it's a challenge to even get in and the more saturated they get the harder their transcription test get get so because they want to lock out as many transcribers as possible so just focus on these other platforms that are not saturated the ones i have mentioned and google more Oh, how long does go transcript take to respond to their tests? So like I've said now, right now, go transcript has been a challenge for many transcribers. They do the test, they try their best, they still don't get no response. I think go transcript are not taking more transcribers right now. So I would advise you not to apply for go transcripts now. But normally they take, they will reply to you within 30 days. If you've passed the test, you'll hear from them within 30 days. If you failed the test, you will know immediately or after 24 hours. But I don't know. Just, right, for, for now, just leave good transcript alone. Try these other platforms. Because good transcript is very saturated. It used to be I remember you used, it used to be so easy to get the good transcript account. Like me, I got it in what, what four hours. I did the test very fast, then I got the plat the account. But now since they are so saturated, it's it's become hard. They try to lock out as many people as possible. Yeah. But you can also try speechpad when they open up. I don't know whether they've opened up. And I've also seen three play media is accepting applications so i was asking about triple media someone was telling me that triple there is a problem with triple media transactions so i don't know what's going on with triple media transactions but i know they are accepting transcribers right now and there's also been something that's going around it's like they want to ban kenyan accounts you know kenyans like selling and buying accounts so they get banned a lot uh, let me see. What is the difference between the transcribe me and between transcribe and Verbit? There is a big difference. There are different companies. You know, transcribe me is a company its own in Israel, and transcribe me is a different transcription company. 
but the differences that come to mind is number one, Vabit has one audio test, Transcribe Me has three. Vabit has a simple grammar test with 10 questions, Transcribe Me has um, grammar test with three parts with very hard questions. Um, what else? Yeah, for Transcribe Me, most of the time you transcribe you know, like from scratch. For Vabit, you get audios that have been automatically generated. You get the transcripts that have been automatically generated and then you edit them. So those are the differences. And it's easier to pass the transcription test for Vabit than it is to pass Transcribe Me's um, audio tests because there are three tests and their pass mark is 98%. So that's the difference. Um, Emmanuel is saying 30 to 60 days for Go Transcript or which platform? Go Transcript. Yeah. But really, the secret to passing all these tests is just following their guidelines. It's following their guidelines. You know, sometimes Vabit, they, the guidelines are very short. They are very short. And if you want to pass that trans transcription test for Vabit, don't have any in inaudibles in it. Please don't. Don't have any inaudibles in it and do your research. I know the current audio, if it has not changed, they mention a number of things, you know, the B movie, the one who produced it, and, you know, a certain festival, I think. So you have to make sure you have researched and you've written the correct you've spelled everything correctly and don't just hear what you want to hear you have to be very detail oriented if you want to pass this huh, interesting um so one of these good transcript takes 30 days if you share their link on your social media yeah who was asking about code transcript Laban. So Laban Emmanuel said it takes 30 days if you share the link on social media. So if it's been 30 days and they've not, I usually say if it's been 30 days, the amount, the time they indicate in their email and they've not gotten back to you, may just count my losses and move on to another platform. You know, just don't linger on one platform, you will give up for no reason. Um, and a good place to get jobs, by the way, is Upwork. I know many people think Upwork is too is overrated. I used to think like that too, but Upwork is a good platform for you to get jobs if you know how to write good proposals. That is why I asked whether I should do a video on writing a good proposal for Upwork. If you know how to write good proposals, Upwork is the best place for you to get experience and for you to get jobs. And the beauty of Upwork is the payment sometimes you you're told to just give a quotation you know how much you want to be paid so upwork will come in handy if you're not able to pass all this transcription test and all that but you know how to write a good proposal and if you write a good proposal on upwork and then you're interviewed and you get the job it's very easy for you to have to get a long-term client if you do the job perfectly if you do the job well, you know, clients on Upwork, if they give you a job and they, um, you give them a beautiful transcript, a high quality transcript, they will always want to work with you. So Upwork, I find that it's, it's better. People don't like writing the proposals, but it's better than, you know, going round and round and trying all these transcription tests and all that. Ah. Uh, what are other transcription companies? I hope, I guess, that aren't saturated as per now. So like I have said, there are many that are not saturated. You just have to research, but try Averback. I know they pay well. Try Transcription Hub. Try Transcription Star. Send them an email. Try Boxtab. Boxtab, they are taking in transcribers. This GMT. Is it called GMT? GMTR. Yeah, I'll look for it. There's also that one. Um, Alpha Sites, they take in transcriptionists. Alpha Sites, it's a kind of a media company, I think, but they employ transcriptionists. Now, for Alpha Sites, they pay well, and I feel like 
they are constant there's a constant flow of jobs and they pay well but you have to go through i think two interviews like you know sit in interviews where you meet with someone on zoom and then they ask you questions and you answer and all that and after you pass the first interview you'll have to do a transcription test but once you get in that's awesome so it's not saturated i know many people are not applying for alpha sites so try all those um platforms that are not so common you know try one former one former by bacteria edge it's not common as such uh also try which one yeah try remote tasks the beauty of remote tasks is that it has many different types of tasks so if there are no transcription tasks you can get other tasks so that way you'll be able to take control of your financials you, you don't want the you know the disadvantage of being an online worker is that if you rely on one platform and that platform like now what's happening with Babit. That platform does not have jobs. That means your financials become a problem. So be on as many platforms as possible. I have never received reply from Vabi. Does that mean I failed or I should wait? Yeah, like I said, if it's been 30 days and you've not had anything from them, just cut your losses and move on. You know, you know you can be doing something else while you wait. Don't just stay there and wait so if you've not heard from them just assume we failed or work on something else as you wait you can also try reapplying but not now right now they've however they're not taking in more transcribers try like after two months after three months do the test again you know reapply get the test to it and see whether you'll get in but always make sure your first transcription your second transcription test is better than the first one don't make the same mistakes you made in the first one because you will keep failing that test. Hmm. Um, no, 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 no. When jobs show up and I pick it, it says you can't take this job. Is there a possibility my account has been suspended? No. If the jobs show up, then your account is still in. You know, your account is, is active. No, the there might be two reasons why you're getting this message. It's either someone else has picked the job, so someone else bet you to it, or it's not in your level in terms of rating. So if you have a low rating, you know, you're not able to pick the job. So it, it's not suspended if it's not suspended if you're able to see the jobs on the platform. On Vabit. Kate, which other platform do you work with? Just Vabit. Um, or Rev, Rev, people ask so much about, so many times about Rev. You guys have heard what's going on with Rev. Like, Rev is always deactivating accounts, always. So, no, I, is your Rev account functioning? Mukaisi asks, no, my answer is no, I don't have a Rev account. I tried, when I started, everyone was all about Rev, oh, Rev, you'll make so much money, oh, Rev, you'll get so many jobs, and of course, as a beginner transcriptionist, I tried to apply for it and it was just so crazy, you know. They don't take Kenyans, you have to use a VPN, you have to have, I don't know, Yahoo mail. If you open that account and your VPN is off, then your account gets deactivated. Like so much instability, so so much instability, sorry. So I, I don't have a rev account, don't have a rev account. But I hear they, they are still closing down. They're still deactivating rev accounts for Kenyans. You know, the moment they detect that you're from Kenya, the moment they detect that you're, you're from Kenya, like in terms of your location, your account is deactivated. Yeah. So it's very, un, you know, it's, it's unstable. Rev is unstable. But if you're able to just follow all those things and your VPN is always on, and you're doing everything right you know you're not getting low ratings you might yeah some people are making very good some people are very are making a very good amount of money on rev and you can actually subcontract other people you get like a number of jobs and then you just give them to people to do 
But then if one day you get a lot of jobs, a lot of transcription jobs, maybe someone has sent you three audio files that you're not able to do, then subcontract other people, other transcribers. So tell someone I have three audios, work on this, we we'll, we'll split the benefits or something like that, but never turn down jobs. There are so many transcribers who are looking for jobs. Or oh, another platform that you can, another company you can apply um, is Triple A. Triple A is an Australian company and they also take in transcriptionists, but they don't have a platform. You'll be getting jobs on your email. So try applying on Triple A transcription. Today I'm sharing all my secrets. Um, my Rev account is also not functioning. Yeah, Rev, there's just always something going on with Rev. I don't even talk about Rev if you've noticed because it's tricky. I might not even be able to answer all the questions that I will get. How can you use VPN to change your current location? Um, Kaisi, just download. I don't know which VPN you prefer to use, but there's a free one, Winscribe. Just download Winscribe and you will see a place where you can change your location to a location of your choice. So just download the Winscribe and you'll just see it. Navigate through it, you'll see the point where you change your location. Then you can change to a European country, Asian country. Yeah, but always make sure if you are on Rev, then your VPN is on and the location is not pointing to Kenya. Mm. But my advice would be don't sweat over Rev accounts. No, don't sweat over Rev accounts because Rev is very unpredictable. You might be making 20,000 per week this month and then the next month your account has been deactivated. You'll see that's very demoralizing. But if you have a, a direct client who sends you jobs, then you won't have those issues of not having jobs, accounts being deactivated. Another way for you, yeah. So get direct account, get direct clients for transcription. Those people who need transcription services and you don't have to wait for someone to reach out to you. As long as you see if it's a research company, just know they have interviews and those interviews need to be transcribed. If it's a, um, if it's a podcast, they might need transcription services. You know, if it's a media company, maybe a journalist or just a media company, then they might have transcription jobs for you. If it's a YouTuber, you know, like me, some people also need, like there are times I need my videos or audios transcribed, especially if I use Swahili in it. I usually want it transcribed and then the Swahili parts translated. So there are so many people or so many companies where you can get transcription jobs. Don't shy away from reaching out to them. That is how you get direct clients. Mm. How long does it take for Vabit to reply after submitting the test? For me, it's been one and a half months and nothing from them. Yeah. Omar, I think you've just joined us. So Vabit, like you've said, they usually say they will get back to you in 30 days. But... Um, they used to get back to you. If you fail a test, they will get back to you almost immediately after one day or after two days. But nowadays, it's like they're a bit choosy on who they get back to. So if it's been one month, that's more than 30 days. I think it's safe to assume that they are currently not taking in people. So you, you know, um, work on another platform as you wait or just assume you failed the test. You know, you can always tell whether you failed that test or not, according to, you know, when you look at your transcript after you've submitted it, you can always tell. So it's good to assume that they're not taking in people or you failed it so that you don't wait for one, one year and never hear from them. But it takes 30 days. If it's more than 30 days, just move on or reapply you can always reapply just go re fill the form again they will send you a test again and then try it and i hear they usually approve accounts march around march and september so you can try around that time oh 
Mm. Just take a sip of water. I think I've talked for so long. This is the longest I have been on camera. Mm. Um, how long does it take for Vabit to reply after submitting the test? Oh, I've answered that one. I'm just talking about explain briefly on remote task transcription because I tried to click on transcription option, but it show up as in I can only access the other tasks like leader trans task. So it depends on whether there are transcription jobs at that point in time. So if you try to click on the transcription option and you know when you click on it, you usually have to do the test, you know, the small tests and then direct you to the transcription project. So if when you clicked on it, nothing happened, and that means they don't have transcription jobs at the moment. So normally you would know when there are transcription jobs. You will just see from the platform. But even the leader tasks and the data annotation and data collection, they also still face. So you can try those ones as you wait for the transcription jobs. Like I, like I said, you have to be open-minded in this line of online work just focus on one skill you want to be able to do a number of things don't be choosy mm. while the vpn is on can my people account be closed since it shall be showing a different place no i don't think so i don't think so you know as long as you're not on your people account you know, you just um, switch on the VPN and then you are on Rev. Then I don't think it shall be closed because you've changed your location. People, people move, people relocate. They don't close accounts because you've relocated to Europe and you are living in Kenya. Yeah. So guys, make sure your PayPal accounts are are verified. It makes your life very easy, especially if you want to apply for a Scribi account. You know, make sure they are verified and people always also ask about video captioning jobs so most of these companies that offer transcription jobs also you know they also have they offer captioning as a service and i know they also took in taking captioners so you can also try the video captioning jobs and all these jobs, the transcription, data entry, sometimes the oh, transcription and video captioning, people just call them data entry. So it's like all, all of us who are who do transcription and all that, we are like data entry, data entry clerks, because we're doing a lot of typing. Uh or the amounts of the amounts of money transcriptionists get paid. Someone asked me this on Facebook the other day. It depends with the person you are working for or the account, the platform you are working on. Like right now, Vabit used to pay 30, 30 cents per audio minute, but now I hear they pay 24 cents per audio minute. So if you calculate 24 cents, that's 0 0.24 and by 60 minutes, that's one audio hour then you get around what a thousand and one thousand three hundred yeah so transcribers you can get paid a thousand bob for one audio hour you can get paid fifteen hundred you know twenty thousand uh, not twenty thousand two thousand that's two dollars twenty dollars depending on how where you're working and how you charge your client sometimes people charge their clients even zero point five zero dollars per audio hour no so if it's that's around three thousand thirty dollars for one audio hour so you can make as much or as little as you want depending on the amount of jobs you do and depending on the platform or where you're getting your jobs if it's a direct client the better because you can negotiate your price if it's um a platform then the price is fixed you know so you just have to go with what they're paying and also if sometimes you get a job and it's not transcription really, you're just editing it and proofreading, the price also changes when it comes to editing because it, that's a simpler job compared to transcribing. So the prices differ 
but you you remain in control of the amount of money you make at the end of the week or at the end of the month really depends on how much work you do hmm. one now So if if you are doing transcription, you can also try. You can also try to bid for proofreading and editing jobs. We say transcription is all about grammar. So if you can deliver very nice transcripts, that means you are good at proofreading and editing. So you can bid on data entry jobs, bid on transcription jobs, bid on proofreading and editing jobs. You know. The more you expand, just expand your scope because the more skills you have, the more money you can make. Which other platform is good for a beginner? <laughs> so I've said so many, I've mentioned so many. Um, I've mentioned so many, but most accounts, they are good for beginners. Most of them are, are actually made for beginners. Um, the, the reason why it doesn't really matter whether you are a beginner or an advanced transcriber when it comes to getting transcription jobs is because at some point you need to pass a transcription test. So if you pass that transcription test, it doesn't matter whether you are a beginner, whether you've never done it before. As long as you pass that test, you are a transcriber and that is what matters. So whichever platform you're looking to get in, if they have a transcription test, don't even um, be worried about, they've said they just take advanced transcribers, just focus on passing that transcription test and that's it. Unless it's um, platforms like Alpha Sites that ask you for your CV, you know, and they will call you for a live interview like on Zoom and you have to explain your experience and all that. Otherwise, if it's all these other platforms, just pass the test. It doesn't matter whether you are a beginner or not. But those platforms, I know those companies that pay well, pay well are Alpha Sites, Overback, um, um, what's the name of this platform? Yeah, Vabit is Average Payment, Transcription Star, Box Tab. Transcription Star is also average, but Voxtab also pays well. So there, there, are pla there are companies or platforms that they have like platforms, environments where you can just type and work on like Vabit and Qwebit and Scribble and all those. But there are also transcription companies like the ones I've just mentioned, Voxtab and all, they send you the jobs on email. Oh, there's also transcription for everyone. Maybe you guys should try transcription for everyone. Their pay is also just um, average, but they also take in transcribers. So just Google transcription for everyone. I know you will kind of fill a form if I'm not wrong, and then you will have to sign some contract. They will send your contract on email. You sign it, you email it back. They send your transcription test and guidelines. The guidelines are not so many. The transcription test is very doable. So once you do it, you email back, whatever they ask you to email back, you start getting jobs on your email. So they send you jobs. And for transcription, for transcription, transcription for everyone, the payment sometimes differs in terms of the client. Sometimes they pay $20 per audio minute, sometimes less, sometimes more. So I can't say that their prices are fixed but i know they also um they are open for beginner transcriptionists as long as you pass their transcription test would you mind typing for us those platforms um yeah i'll just type there but most of these platforms i have mentioned them in my previous videos so if you go to any video where i've talked about transcription jobs or you'll get all these platforms, but I'll just take them. So you, I'll take, take some of them so you guys can see them. Mm. 
Signing up seems difficult on my side. Signing up on what, Fima? Fima. What are you, which platform are you trying to sign up on? Mm. So that is the, the platforms are many. The platforms are many. I'm just mentioning them, but if you go to my videos or if there's one I've left out, if you just Google, you'll find a list. Just I know there are websites who also just list them more than I do. If you just Google transcription companies hiring beginners, then the lists are so long. But I would advise you before you sign up on any platform, please do your research. Do your research. You want to read reviews. And when you're reading reviews, the things you check on are one, how much do these people pay? Do they actually pay? Even if they pay like $30 or $10 or $5, like free play media, do they actually pay? Like, have there people, are there people who have received the money on their bank, in their banks or their phones? That is what you check on when you're reading the reviews. You want to check um, about, you want to know how often they have jobs and you want to know whether they are legit and the types of jobs you get there. Are they Australian accents, you know, British English? What types of jobs do they have? So that means you've concluded of, you've actually verified that, that this is a real platform, then you go and sign up. But don't just sign up on platforms just because they've been listed in some website. You'll find yourself signing up for pyramid schemes, like public clicks and the rest. And also don't sign up on platforms or bid on jobs that ask you to pay money before you before you work. Like I know when you're bidding for jobs, I know when you're bidding for jobs on freelancer freelancer.com you will get some people who tell you now after you bid it they send you a message to tell you to continue with this registration you have to click this link and fill the form or they send you an email that they send you their email tell you to <coughs> send your details to that email and then they will tell sorry then they will tell you before you start working you need to deposit i don't know you need to deposit a hundred dollars for security. Please don't fall for those things. That meant you are applying for a job and they tell you to pay. The only platform I know is legit and where you pay a subscription fee, like even Upwork, there's um option for you to upgrade your account is Apex listings. Now other platforms that tell you to pay, like freelancer, where someone tells you to pay a deposit so that you can work, please run very fast. Those people are just they will use you, especially if they um, steer you away from the platform. If someone starts telling you, let's now start working on email, even if that person is from Upwork, don't, don't fall for that. Always work on the platform so that you don't get scammed. No one wants to work for free in this world. I followed up your Vabit blog and I did it. I sent my application on 18th, did the test and it went through successfully after how long did they give the feedback? Do 18th of this month. Yeah, so like I've said, they take like 30 days. Just give it 30 days. If you don't hear from them, just know they are, maybe they are not taking up new applications or you've not passed the test. So give yourself 30 days from the day you applied and then see whether they will get back to you. If they don't, just move on. And if you really want, if you've never done transcription before, I would advise you to practice on platforms like Scribi. Scribi have a section where you can practice. They have audios, you know, audios, British English, you know, American English, Australian, Indian. So you can practice with those audios. You can also practice on good transcript. I know good transcripts those have a section for you to practice. Even other back have a section for you to practice. So practice because if you've never done transcription before and you are applying or registering on a platform, you still need to pass that test. And if you've never done it before, chances of you passing that test are very low. So you have to first understand what is transcription, how is it done, what what, what is a good 
transcripts what should i look out for you know what should i never get wrong and all that so first practice before you start looking for these jobs but if you have experience then go ahead and apply for these jobs so it seems like it's been one and a half hours i don't know whether there's someone in the live stream who still has a question before i end the live in the next 10 minutes so i'll be doing another live next week probably on friday again just to follow up on so that we can interact and see how you guys are faring on in terms of your transcription journey but my my take will be or my advice will, to you will be don't give up don't don't even think about giving up right now you might be having a challenge but if you keep at it for long enough you will just be glad you never gave up because like i've always said this is a lucrative field especially during this time of covid 19. i'm not saying covid 19 is a good thing i'm just saying it's created an opportunity for transcribers to get more work you know everyone is doing meetings on zoom people are you know training sessions and what so there's so much content that needs to be transcribed that means there's a lot of work for you if you know where to look if you know where to look so don't give up on transcription it takes time it might take three months two months six months or you know even one year depending on how committed you are everything in this life nini depends on commitment uh i'll just take the last questions phil and ivy how much do they pay on qa world kindly so they usually indicate that they pay 20 0 0.20 dollars per audio minute but i think you and me both know that's not the case you know you can work on a number of files on q and then end up getting paid um 32 bob or 50 bob so i don't know how they make their payments but i know they say they pay 0 0.20 dollars but they end up paying less than that but people who are who are you know gold silver those other levels i know the payment increases a bit but it's still in the same range also you get more money when you work on longer files so yeah that's all about payment on qa qa is very good for experience if you're looking for that beginner experience then look for qa world you'll get the experience you know how to transcribe how to edit how to navigate a transcription platform how to put timestamp and all that so when you move on to other platforms you already know what to expect 